Oh, you want to drink water? Well, why don't you call your mom? I got you, Cowboy Bunk House, hold my beer store. I'm going to leave out the uh, full names of everyone involved other than myself here. But I was punching cows with my old friend Dan. And the two of us were both in our late teens or early 20s. I don't remember exactly when it was. And uh, this is in the Nevada desert. And I don't, we were doing whatever the heck we were doing. And we come across the water hole and there was a whole bunch of Mustangs come down to get water. And uh, this is something probably a lot of people don't know about horses in general, Mustangs in particular. But a uh, horse doesn't really need to drink every day. Uh, our stall raised show horses and the, the, yeah, they darn sure need to have nice clean water. But physically, they don't need it all the time. So a Mustang will only drink about every third day, uh, especially when they're in this part of the world where water's few and far between. They get to eating around the water and so the, the feed gets further and further away from the water and so they have to travel from the feed to the water. And so they'll go about three days. That's kind of the longest I've ever really seen them go and I spent a lot of time studying Mustangs in the wild-eyed pistol waving days. Um, but they'll go about three days and so when they come in they look like gutted snowbirds and they just drink as much as they could possibly hold and then when they when they leave out of there, shoot, they, I mean, they look like balloons. They look like 55-gallon drum of water in their belly. So anyway, we're watching them, watching them drink. We're just watching them drink water because Mustangs are cool to look at. And Dan, who grew up here, uh, he allowed he'd never rope a Mustang. And at that particular time in my life, Mustanging was what I did. That was all I cared about doing was catching Mustangs. And... Uh, yeah, you can look at it. Yeah, it's not legal, but, but I did it anyway. Anyway, so I said, God dang it, man. You never rope a Mustang. Let's go rope with some shitter. So we built to him, and I was trying to line one up for him. It, it's a lot easier in teams, and there's a, I won't get into how it all works, but I was trying to line one up for him, and the one I lined up for him, uh, I think he got a little faint-hearted about, but right behind it was a, Yearling colt about that big as roan. It looked like a cocklebur. It just all poofy and it was all belly because I hadn't drank in a couple of days. And that's the whole part about the, the catching them on water, not drinking. Uh, if you wait till they're till they're plumb full of water, they can't run very fast. And they, they well, they can't run very fast anyway. But they can't run very far, and then they give up. And they're easy to rope. So anyway, I run this cocklebur up to him. Run this other horse up to him, and he got faint-hearted about this. But there was a cocklebur right behind him. So he ropes old Cockleburr, and uh, Dan's a ropey son of a gun. He could have roped anything in there. He didn't need my help. But uh, so he ropes the Cockleburr, and uh, it went in around a little bit, and he took his rope off of it because it was just sport rope, and he didn't want it. But a foal, if you've been around foals very much, they'll mother up to about anything, like right quick. I mean, anything. But especially a gentle gelding, which is what Dan was riding, so this pot liquor, his mama had run off and left him, and this little pot liquor, he mothered up to Dan's gelding. And we kind of tried to bush him off, and he wouldn't bush off, and, and so Dan thought that was pretty cool, this little pot liquor just followed him home like a dog. Now he had a little roan Mustang. And so we get back to camp, turn our horses out. That colt, he went in the barn with us, and, and he didn't care. And turned him out, turned him out in the wrangle pen with the rest of the horses. So that's all well and good. So Dan, he goes, he get, goes and gets in the shower. He's big on taking showers. And uh, so while he's in the shower, I get on the phone and I call another friend of ours. His name's Fred. And I said, hey, Fred. And I told him this whole story. I said, call back here in about five, six minutes. And uh, I'll, I'll take the phone. I'll make Dan get out of the shower and I'll, I'll give the phone to him. And I'll tell him you're the game warden. And you say you're the game warden. And that you were up on top of the rim and you were watching us with your binoculars and and you uh, you saw this all and you're coming to arrest us. And so Fred, he thinks that's a hell of a good idea. So anyway, it all goes down. Dan's in the shower. Phone rings. Dan, the phone's for you. And he says, oh, I'm in the shower. And I said, I think you need to take this. This is game warden. And so anyway, Dan comes out of the shower and there's just two cowboys living there. So he didn't even put any clothes on. And... Uh, 
he comes out and he listens and uh uh-huh, uh uh-huh. oh yes sir okay and he gets off the phone and he's bought it hook line and sinker and he thinks he's going to jail over this deal and so the first as soon as he hangs up the phone first thing that he thinks of is get rid of the evidence so he he runs and he grabs his pistol and he runs back out in the yard and he's out in the wrangle pen and he's naked as the day he was born with a pistol in his hand and he's trying well he hadn't made any shots yet but he, he his aim is he's going to shoot this colt and be done with the evidence so that way he can't go to jail for it That's no evidence no crime and so anyway I see what's about to go down and I know what kind of shot he is and so he's damn sure going to get a couple of the geldings before he gets the colt if he gets the colt and uh so I need to stop him, but I also know he's temper, and I know he's naked with a pistol in his hand, and when I tell him what happened, that I'm going to be the one that maybe gets shot at. And so I kind of had to make a decision there. Anyway, I told him, I got him stopped, I got him, I got a hold of him, got him stopped, and I got the pistol in my hand, and then I explained to him what happened, and he got just as mad as I thought he was, and I'm really, really glad I had the pistol because we were good friends, but he would have shot me. <laughs> but I was backing away as I was giving the punchline <laughs> that it was Fred, not the game warden. And then I took off running, and I'm not a very fast runner, and neither is Dan. But maybe I was weighed, weighed down by the fact that I had clothes on because he caught me. And I got tackled naked in the middle of a crowd, and I got a really pretty good thumping over the whole deal and it was uh it was several years before i could tell that story with him around without getting another one